Greetings everyone, this is Aga. Thank you for tuning in. Today I welcome you from this beautiful beach in Portugal near Lagos. And per another request, I will be talking about sexual energy and how to harvest it, control it, how to basically transmute this energy into another form of expression rather than simply releasing the urge to orgasm. And I'm sure there is a lot of videos out there that talk about transforming this basic life force energy, very powerful life force energy. And I will be talking about my process and how I harvest this energy and how I use it to build myself internally and how to use it as also a bridge to take me to another experience, adventure in life. So this energy I use as a building block rather than for pleasure. Obviously, pleasure in the right time is absolutely welcomed, but let's get into this idea more of what is the sexual energy, um, what are the ways that we can use this beautiful <laughs> life force in our lives, in our experience on earth, instead of just simply going to the beach or connecting with other people in the summer. And of course, we are very much exposing ourselves and exposed to the skin and the physical beauty. And there's this dance of nature and sun and sexual vibration happening. So a lot of people are going in that direction and they are looking for a partner maybe just a vacation partner. I've been traveling a lot, so I have been observing dynamics between different couples, same sex, different sex, families. It's really beautiful how people actually connect skin to skin. You know, there is that exchange that is happening with love and that is very powerful to see. Uh, but nonetheless, a lot of you, and especially young men, before you turn 30, your hormones are skyrocketing and you are simply thinking with your, you know, with your abdominal. And there is nothing wrong with that. It is for a reason that we have these desires, that we have these uh, passionate, inspiring juices flowing. Um, but this was not just designed for a quick release. And um, if you think about it, if a man ejaculates a lot, he's releasing the life force and he's basically wasting it. The pleasure lasts a few minutes or, or more. For most cases, it's up to 10 minutes. That's what studies show, the average intercourse. And then what happens is you as a man are depleted of a lot of that life force um, that is within your system and you will age faster and your organs will deplete faster the more you engage in sexual conduct, the, even with yourself, if you're masturbating or if you're having intercourse um, with another person. So be aware that in ancient times when we're evolving as humans, we didn't have as frequent contacts with another partner. So that's why semen is so powerful and it has so many different, and it has so much you know, potentiality to create life because it was needed to assure that the life continues, that the species continue. But in now, now day and age, people are, you know, protecting themselves using condoms and they engage in endless forms of sexual contact. And for men, unfortunately, this means that you're going to use your life energy faster. So coming from that perspective of awareness and growth and how we can harvest this energy, I received a question from one of my viewers who is a young man and um, he was interested in the idea of 
a process, uh, you know, of alchemizing, sublimating this energy and changing it into something that can be like a building block. So I use this energy as well to guide me and to shape next sort of a bridge to the next idea area of my life that I want to build. And that requires commitment to self. So the first thing I want to talk about is what is your commitment to, to self? Do you put yourself first or do you still live in that notion um, that if you think about yourself, you're selfish? Again, I've been traveling a lot and outside of my healing studio, you know, I get a chance to observe how people, you know, commonly think on how or how they communicate with each other. And it's been apparent to me that a lot of people think that if they think about themselves, they're selfish and they say, oh, I have to be a little bit of an egoist or an egoist in order to actually like myself or put myself first. And let me tell you, there's nothing more like, incorrect about what it means to put yourself first. If you don't put yourself first, if you don't take care of yourself, you will not be able to serve others. You will just be following certain instincts, one of them sexual, and you will be a recipient of modalities that are offered to you in modern society. Meaning, this world is like an um, interface of a game. You know, you have many, many options here and you can be this character or that character and there is judgment on earth associated with it. You know, if you're a Samaritan, you're a giver, that's like uh, viewed as something noble and not a lot of people can subscribe to that life. Or if you are a go-getter, if you're a businessman, you participate in the rat race. And people love to categorize these things and put them in boxes, completely not understanding what it means to take care of yourself. Again, you are not in position to take care of anyone in any way, sexually or otherwise, if you do not practice self-care. So commitment to self is the most important thing. And what it means for me and what I have done in order to develop that commitment to self. First, I started looking at my belief systems, if I judge others, if I place some kind of a value, negative or positive at situations. You want to get out of that zone. So it's very important that you start and the simple thing I can offer you right now, a process of separating your thoughts, your true, you know, unique, authentic expression from what you have inherited from your family, from your ancestors, you know, everything that's happening in your body um, genetically has been going on for thousands of years. You know, our civilization is about almost 6,000. We're coming close to a cycle, and to end of the cycle, and there are other civilizations before us. So whatever is happening in inside of you, this energy is coming from hundreds of generations when you didn't really look um, like modern human. So you want to make sure that you start separating what the society feeds you, what the conditioning is from what is really your direction that you prefer to go. So one of the things you can do, you can have a jar uh, or a few jars. And I recommend starting with two. One jar is like if you hear inside your head like a comment or a statement oh, uh, this, this is ugly, or this politician is this and that. Whatever, whatever statement that is judgmental you have, stop yourself for a moment and ask yourself, okay, where is this coming from? Did I develop this opinion? Where did I hear this first? And start segregating, you know, separating your voice from 
the things that you're hearing from the media, you know, from your parents, from the teachers, from your, you know, partners, and so on. And that process can take you a while. But generally, we want to get out of the duality. This is what I'm talking about. You want to get out of the duality concept, okay? On Earth, people love that kind of black and white um, game. Something is better, something is worse. And no, life is not like that. Life is not black and white. It's not that contrasty. Life is multidimensional. And everything that happens, happens energetically, and energetically, if you grasp what is going on inside you, you can start gradually navigating towards the space that energetic is energetically is more suitable of controlling, you know, the the trajectory of your spaceship, where you're going as a human in your in your evolution. Uh, so first thing, okay, separate what is yours from what is not. And you can put this in the jar, so you write the statement, put it in a jar, and then once a week, you burn it. You have a ceremony, a ritual. Rituals are very important also in changing our psyche because they acknowledge that now we are ready to operate and think differently, not in duality, okay, in multidimensionality. We are beginning a process of connecting deeper with ourselves, with this undergoing flow in, in this current that has nothing to do with anything that is happening on earth, okay? And um, as you know, physical matter, physical component is much less than 1% in a cosmic scale. If you could take all the matter in the universe, it would fit in one centimeter square cube. The rest is information, is a field of potentiality. So when I talk about sexual energy, I talk about your access to the field. And this is how it starts. So this is the source, right? The physical aspect that, that sexual surge um, is where the energy connects to the physical expression. But that is just the beginning of the stream, of the, you know, journey of the stream. That stream, if you compare it to water, has a long journey in order to get to the ocean. So if you are at the beginning, at the source, where this, you know, this energy is coming out into the physical and you're releasing it left or right, you are not getting yourself anywhere. So think about it like this. Okay, what can I do in order to actually use this energy to travel somewhere, right? So first, separating what is like mentally not mine uh, from what I prefer to, to keep. And uh, second thing I want to talk about is incorporating some methods so that you can actually begin observing the sensations rather than, you know, giving in to them. And any form of meditation or observation will do, but again, you would have to commit to the self-process, putting yourself first. When you know yourself, then you can have a response rather, rather than reaction. Okay, so let's say you are tempted to masturbate uh, or tempted to go to a bar, have a couple of drinks or hook up with someone for Tinder or any other apps that people are using these days. I want you instead to go back to this jar and first ask yourself, okay, where is this coming from? And again, separate what's yours, what's not, and then have a process of waiting and observing this energy rather than getting frustrated and constantly, you know, directing your attention of that intensity, to that intensity. So observe what is happening. Imagine that there is three of you, that there is a triangle, okay? 
and one part of you is human that is experiencing the sensations. The second part will be actually a creator. You are also creating the sensation. And the third aspect of it is the observer. So see if you can switch from the one who is experiencing to the one who is observing. Like if you could, you know, split yourself to three characters, okay? And allow yourself first to be an observer. You're not ready to be a creator yet, but you can observe. And if it's hard, you know, 10, 15 minutes pass by and you're still tempted, to release the energy, what can you do? Well, again, you need to have a process and know that this process is based on commitment to self, knowing yourself and knowing that if you understand that this energy can take you anywhere in life, either you wanna be a musician or a parent, artist, a businessman, whatever your passion is, this is the energy that will drive you towards that goal. Um, so um, whatever will help you not give into it, but actually identify this energy as a building block, write it down, okay? This is a stream. When you take it, when you ride with it, it can... If you use things like yoga, if you use things like mindfulness, like meditation, it will take you to the place you want to experience. So maybe for you it's a success or maybe it's knowing that you are in control of this energy, that it's not controlling you and you don't have to spend your time in your lower chakras. <laughs> because this is a wasting of your this is a waste of your potential so one of the things you can do you can write down okay if this energy was like a building block like a brick okay what can i build it with and i want you to write down the things what you would like to build how do you envision your future so vision and imagination and visioning is a huge component of how we learn about the self because our mind, our imagination, the creative mind, already knows from the higher perspective how to take you to that place of success. So what you need to do is allow yourself to have a vision, some sort of a symbol. Again, in physical reality, we need some sort of symbology, a ritual that will take you from one step to the other. And I want you to write this down. What is your vision? How do you see yourself in this? And connect to the emotion, to the excitement of that vision. And see if this helps you feel excitement, feel bliss, feel you know that surge of positive energy of endorphins in a way that is not related to orgasm, but to actually playing with that energy and creating something different with it. Just like we create wine, we create spirits. It goes through the process of fermentation and then you can taste a beautiful product that was taken through a process, okay? And that vision can be transformed into some kind of a vision board where you cut pictures, you create an inspiration and you attach that sexual energy to that inspiration. So you give it another opportunity to express, not just for sexual. And you, um, and you can do it you know, many different ways. It could be a vision board, it could be few things, it could be uh, maybe you want to build a family, okay? And what is very important, envision yourself doing that, being that. So how would it feel for you to use this energy to build a family or to build a company, okay? So again, imagination can take you anywhere. That's why we use this in order to create a blueprint, a different blueprint. If you give into sexual energy, 
you are basically in the category of people that are on this earth utilizing ideas that come from others. And there is another category of people that are creators. So I'm in the second category. I create the experience I want to have. I decided a long time ago that whatever is the status quo, whatever I was receiving from my parents, from my environment, did not at all you know, manifested in happiness, in balance, in growth. It was very dark and I did not want to stay in that vibration, in that environment, in that mindset. I felt like I completely did not understand or trust the process of life within myself when I was listening to the words of you know, people who fed me, who made sure that I was safe as a child. So I chose my own process. So again, you need to make sure that you are consciously choosing, putting yourself first. It doesn't matter if you're not a good daughter. You know, somebody tells you, you're not a good daughter. You don't, you don't call me as much and you're not, or, or son, and you're selfish. Okay, Leave these voices, uh, you know, to where they belong <laughs> and uh, make sure that you understand that somebody else's wishes are not your promises. Okay, so, so we need to definitely make sure that we start creating boundaries and we understand that everybody is here to take care of themselves. Okay, nobody will take care of you. Nobody will give you that balance. Nobody will give you that happiness you are only the only person who can do it okay so even you know if you have this amazing love for your mother absolutely but it doesn't mean that you're here to fulfill other people's expectations okay this is another thing we need to make clear so that might be another tip for you okay where is your action coming from okay be very deliberate and really spend some time on it okay um and consciously start setting boundaries because this process needs your attention. What it means is that it's okay to take a break from relationships, from romance, from you know being constantly busy with other people. No, you need to take time to actually learn about you know that potentiality within you okay that has nothing to do with your ancestors with your parents um, and you can obviously share with them that you are developing you're growing you're maturing um, so you require a process um, process is always needed okay so moving on now that you are committed to yourself 100% before you commit to others what is going to be your daily process? So for that, I personally chose yoga, um, vipassana meditation. I also use self-hypnosis and some form of pranayama. This is all changing. I also love binaural beats and um, I sleep with them. So setting intentions before I go to bed. Uh, what is it that I am clearing or what is it that I'm inducing myself with, right? Taking full responsibility of how you feel every single moment. This is another very important uh, aspect of taking control of your sexual energy. You are required at this point to stop blaming anyone for anything. So if you're still pointing fingers and others, okay, again, you need to go back to the jar and you need to make sure that you connect to that voice that is judging and you find out who did you pick up this from? Because we're only born with two inherent fears. Um, in life one is the fear of fire and the second one is the fear of like falling you know if, if you if you are like falling from the tree or uh, edge of the cliff uh, 
other than that, every other thing, judgment, fear, pers you know, uh, perspective that was um, fed to you is external. So you definitely want to have that conversation. Okay, what is it that I am still, you know, uh, repeating that is not me? Um, so this is very important. We are stopping the blame. We don't blame anyone for anything. We take full responsibility. Okay. And maybe you need to go through another process of like forgiveness, self-forgiveness. And you can use teachers, healers, right? That's why there is this channel. There are many other teachers out there uh, who can assist you. So if you have a hard time committing to self, okay, use the services, book few sessions, make sure that you understand that commitment to self means also that you investing in yourself. Nobody, you know, be, uh, build an empire uh, overnight. This is a process. Process lasts a lifetime. But, in, in you know, initially it might be hard for you. So you need to make sure you are, under someone sort of a supervision or guidance rather okay and then when you are strong enough when you truly start feeling the commitment to self you carry on on your own so this is important that you when you put yourself first you invest in yourself okay you spend money on yourself and that means eating quality food eating good superfoods making sure that you anchor this this energy that sexual you know potential that source energy that is you know ejaculating into the physical so to speak uh, for you to build things for you to create and be okay with that be okay with spending money on yourself be okay with um eating good quality food, be okay with really taking time to learn about, you know, labels and how to switch more natural to more natural foods, how to add superfoods. I have some really good videos on superfoods. One of my favorite one, I'll include the link below, below is the matcha with different kinds of uh, components that will definitely... Uh, dial you up and then with that energy you can do something uh, so this is this is uh, one of the things we uh, turn attention to the self we commit to ourselves. what I also recommend my process was vipassana meditation observing rather than um, engaging in any thought process and that takes time to learn. I signed up for a 10-day Vipassana course and I experienced a very powerful clearing and shift. And I, I knew that this is going to be one of my methods for the rest of my life. Stillness is the key and listening to what's happening within. If you have a hard time with um, going to 10-day Vipassana course, sign up for another meditation course that you can commit to at the moment. And also for me, it's daily yoga, pretty much five days a week, it's, it's minimum. And I have noticed how much I've learned within less than a year and a half about my body and how I can maintain you know, strength within my system because this energy that's coming from the base, from your root, uh, you can when when you're practicing yoga you can using the breath and using awareness you can allow the snake of this energy to dance through other systems in your body so yoga is very good in shaping this the snake dance this vine that is happening around the shushumna around the spinal cord right so whatever process you want to use try different things okay one of the things is very crucial is that nothing will happen if you don't put initial effort to it and one thing might not work for you so I encourage you to try vipassana if you cannot do vipassana sign up for another uh, mindfulness uh, or or meditation course there are only two types of meditations 
mindfulness and focus, right? And the best ones are the ones that combine the two, and vipassana is one of them. Um, but you can start with something a little bit um, less time-consuming because for vipassana you have to sign up for 10-day course. Second thing is yoga. So yoga you can do at home. I subscribe to a website and I can do yoga all over the world. I used to do yoga all the time with YouTube channels. I really like Michelle Goldstein um, yoga channel called, what is it called? Heart Alchemy Yoga. And she's a great mindfulness teacher. You can do this at home or if you have hard time doing it at home, again, sign up for the class connect with another person um, that wants to maybe do a similar process. So if you're a young man and you're interested in transmuting this energy, connect to someone that will help you achieve your goal. So when we create, you know, a web, a blueprint for our evolution, for, for this process of transmuting, harvesting the sexual energy, if we involve few people in it, if we inform, this is what I'm doing right now, then we're making ourselves accountable. So what other steps you can take to make yourself accountable to stay in that process, right? Informing your friends, asking them to join you, okay? Another thing would be to be very transparent, okay? You can say, you know, I am constantly, you know, looking for ways to experience this uh, sexual energy and it's frustrating. Uh, so if you're honest, you can definitely connect deeper right away to what you are and being honest with what you are at the moment is one of the first things. And you know, if you feel comfortable, share this with someone, you know, maybe like a woman in your life that is a friend, maybe a little bit older, right? That can help you a little bit, that can understand where you are. And it's not a shame to feel this way. And it's very powerful to be transparent and to be honest about where you are, because from where you stand, you can actually, if you just observe it, right? If you work on releasing the judgment, then you can look and see more options, more perspectives. Uh, when you first stand still with where you are at the moment. So these would be some of the techniques that I recommend. Also visualizing that you know your body here um, along your shushumna is a channel of energy okay so this is not just the physical body and the physical you know uh, shape and the muscles and blood and all the physiological aspects okay we are mostly energy everything is mostly energy if you are not convinced of that yet close your eyes and start observing your system start observing what's going on don't get engaged with it but observe the thoughts observe all of this incredible flow of information that is constantly talking to you okay so that is where the physical reality comes from so this is for a reason there is a reason why you have spine nervous system and why we talk about chakra systems in eastern you know modalities and new age modalities because um people several thousands of years ago already discovered that when we use our breath in the body and we create a channel within our breathing system we can we can speed up that energy we can make it stronger and this energy from being stuck in the lower chakras lower parts of your body will start shooting upwards and help you connect to that visionary within you so visionary it's more on a higher level right but first you need to go through your stomach you need to release um, negative emotional connections that is in your uh, solar plexus chakra 
and then you go into love and compassion, first self, first self love, forgiveness. All this clearing needs to happen. That's why the channel of energy and speeding up this energy is necessary for you to expand and get to the next level of using this energy to build your future. And one of the exercises that I mentioned in another video is coming from a Tantra um, system that can be used during sexual act, but you can use it anytime you have sexual urge. So if it's really hard for you to control it, I'm going to demonstrate this again um, so you can actually practice it when you are on a street, when you are not in a sexual context at all, and see if after 10, 15 minutes, this energy doesn't pass. I assure you, it will pass. It's not gonna be the same. So what I'm asking you is to give yourself 10, 15 minutes window when you practice this exercise, and then see what happens, and report to me down below what, what were your results. But what we do, we want to first use the muscles and the body that we have, right? So first of all, I want you to practice locking your root. So locking your root, the, the mula bandha, you know, the base chakra, the base of your spine, where the, the muscles for releasing are located in your body, you want to lock them. Like if you're trying to squeeze your pee, okay? And practice that and practice, just like me, I'm doing it right now, practice talking, walking around, doing other things. You want to make sure you control the physical muscles. That could be your first step. And if you're a woman, you can look into jade eggs. These eggs you can put into your vulva, into your yoni. They come with like a thread and they will help you um, strengthen these, these muscles. And they come in different sizes. Um, so whatever you need to learn to control this muscle, um, use that, okay? You can just squeeze it, squeeze, squeeze it, relax, squeeze it, relax. And then see if you can maybe last for five, 10 minutes walking around just like that. <laughs> okay, so this is our route, right? And then the channel of energy goes, you know, up and down. It's like in a circle or maybe zigzag around your shushumna. Uh, you regulate it with the breath, with your awareness. But then the energy, you know, when it goes upwards, we have to control it too. So what do we do? We take our tongue and we place it in our soft palate. So not behind your teeth, but further up. And then try to stay like that for a little bit. Try to breathe like that. And visualize this energy traveling along your spine. So obviously, every once in a while, you're going to have to swallow your saliva. Try to keep your tongue the same way and your muscles the same way and swallow. And visualizing that this is a circuit. This energy is circulating. It's not going down. It's not going up. It is being recycled. And it's going through your system. Okay, so this is one of the exercises you can do in order to take control of your sexual energy. And if you create a circuit, the circuit, if you add like a breath work or if you inhale and you press the energy down, press push the air down while you're squeezing your Kegel's muscles, visualize that there is a fire going so not only you create a channel but you also with your breath directing the attention to the base you are stopping the inhalation and exhalation you hold the breath maybe 10 15 20 seconds visualize that there is a fire you're building a fire and then when you are ready to release, slowly relax the muscles in your mula bandha, in your root chakra, and visualize this fire burning all your limitations, expanding, clearing. 
the space for this energy to rise up and you might feel a beautiful rush in your head that orgasmic blissful exciting feeling that will be a different version of that ecstasy that you experience with another person so this is uh you know my recommendation and i am in the process of creating a course right now my first online course about addictions how to get out of addictions and perhaps you are addicted to pornography or other forms of disconnect from yourself if that is the case i will be offering this online course i think in a month i am going through the editing process right now and it, it takes a while but if you need a process a month process that will kick start you so that you can actually later you know continue on your own just is something to consider I welcome of course always your questions and thank you for your interest thank you for engaging I wish you a wonderful wonderful self-commitment process wonderful summer and I will see you in the next episode of um, uh, tree of life coaching namaste have a great day